Hi everyone, welcome to the Man in Japan podcast show where we enjoy hearing from unique guests who are what I call global locals. They're usually risk takers, people who have lived overseas for an extended period of time and or immigrated and have basically become like the locals of their adopted country. Thus my definition of global locals. Today, I would like to welcome Masaki Shimada. Masaki has now lived in the United States for almost as twice as long as he's lived in Japan. I invited Masaki to join us today because I thought he would be able to share some invaluable insight on the US, Japan, international marriage, immigrating, and being bilingual and bicultural. Masaki was originally born and raised in Nagaoka City, in Niigata Prefecture located on the Japan Sea Coast. At 18 years old, he left Niigata to study in Tokyo at ICC, the International College of Commerce and Economics, which today is known as Tokyo International University or TIU. At ICC, Masaki participated on his first overseas study abroad program to Willamette University in Salem, Oregon for two months. This study abroad experience would forever change his life. So Masaki, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. So I'm just going to just jump into, you know, because I'm sure people are interested about how you transitioned from Japan to the United States or back and forth. You went on mm. that first two month overseas study abroad program to Willamette University. Why did you decide yes. to go on that? Main reason was because, you know, I wanted to see the United States. Uh, I was attracted by the U.S. since I was little. I loved the movies and watching all the, the exciting stuff uh, happening in the U.S. So I wanted to go to the U.S. before I die. And it was a chance to go by joining ICC. You know, ICC was not difficult college to get into. So I thought I had a shot. Also, one of your reasons to go to ICC was they had this um, study abroad program to the United States. Yes. When I was researching uh, colleges, my grandpa looked at some of the brochures and he thought this new college, ICC, is different. And he really liked the, the founder's mission statement, why he made a college. And ICC had a sister school from its inception, which was Wallami University. So I thought if I go to this college, there'll be a lot of uh, foreigners, you know, walking around and maybe I have a chance to speak to them and maybe become a friend. So when you were in high school, were yeah. you already very interested in English or could you speak English at that point? <laughs> no, I liked America from the movies and music but no my English <laughs> score was really low because I didn't like to study I just liked America you know I try to study very hard but uh, there are only, only limited uh, number of colleges maybe my academic ability could get in and ICC was one of them the first time I went to uh, ICC and then try to join the club I joined the ESS English speaking society club because I wanted to improve and you have to go up in the front and then uh, you have to introduce yourself in English and I only thing I could say was my name is Masaki Shimada and I like movies <laughs> that was it yeah the, there was a first uh, spring seminar Willamette exam in the fall of my freshman year so I prepared studied really hard for six months and I failed and then the following February the group uh, left for US and even though I failed uh, I was a runner-up and one of the participants uh, who was a female student uh, declined to join so I got in I was very lucky so you got in thanks to someone dropping out yes well if not you wouldn't have gone to the United States exactly and everything is different Wow <laughs> we wow. probably not be talking to each other right yeah now. we wouldn't be here like, so tell me about right. those two months at Willamette University in the United States. Tell me what mm. was going on. What were you thinking? What were you surprised at? Just give me a summary of what your experience was. I remember, I, I think it was a big shock when I landed in Portland. I My image of America was really big city like LA or New York. Portland was very different. Just like a landing on uh, Hokkaido, you know, just the <laughs> green and nothing else. When I arrived in Salem, the town was very small, looked like a very conservative, small city. And the Willamette University looked really old with all the red bricks. Uh, but it was a really beautiful campus. And of course, at that time, my English wasn't that good. So everything, you know, all the orientations and the instructions went like, whew, 
you know, I was trying to ask my friends what was going on, what am I supposed to do, yeah, things like that. And of course, the classes uh, were not easy for me. But、um, maybe after two weeks, I started to get used to the sound of English or the pace of the speaking, and I started to understand a little by little. And then I started to really realize the place Willamette is just a wonderful place to study. You know, it's a small school, a very friendly people. My thinking. Of just you know visiting U.S. changed to maybe I want to come back and become an American student, a you know, foreign exchange student, studying hard and getting a degree. So that was big transition. What about life. like academically? Those two months was it really tough? And what about you know, socially? Did you socialize and meet a lot of American students? <laughs> Although my English wasn't that strong, I really like to meet people、uh, with my broken English. So I try to go as many social event parties gathering as possible. So I was able to make、uh, many friends, particularly with what they used to call. Counselors.、Uh, they are Walame students. I think they are either volunteers or paid a little bit to、uh, be a, like a bridge person between the、uh, students from Japan and the Walame students.、So、I become kind of close to some of them. You know, if you have more friends, you want to talk, you want to share, you want to understand. So another motivation that you want to study English more. So, What about、yeah. parties and social life there? I really like dancing when I was young. The parties was great. You know, there are a lot of music. People are just、uh, talking. I didn't understand a lot of a conversation, but I just like to dance. I like to meet the people.、Uh, I think really helped me to relax, and then again, I think it was a good motivation for me to study more English. So dancing was a key for you to get to meet a lot of people. Yeah, I was pretty good. You know, at that time, you know, they call club now, but it used to be called disco. So when I was a freshman uh, preparing uh, to take the exam at the T I T I U or I C C, because of the, a lot of、uh, pressure and studying so hard, I went to the disco in Tokyo. Uh, on a Friday night with my、uh, ESS buddy, and we just danced, danced until you know we drop.、Wow. So we are pretty good dancer. And Oregon, you know, as you know, it's kind of a country state,、yeah. right?、Yeah. We are from the big city in Tokyo, <laughs> and we knew the like a disco dance. So yeah, we had a good time. Did you get a girl,、um, an American girlfriend? Well,、or? yeah, I became a few counselors.、Uh, we became very close.、Uh, one particular, one of the female、uh, counselors who lived right next to my、uh, residence hall. I think she went to Japan when she was high school. She was really interested in Japan, so she was very friendly, and she was trying to help my English. And asking me to go to parties or you know some uh, restaurants uh, during free time, so we become close. All of that was a big motivation: the dancing, the social life, counselor, kind of having like a good friend or almost like a girlfriend, and that was all strong motivation you for you. Yes, that you would want to come back to study in the United States. Yes. So tell me what happened after two months. You go back to ICC, and then what happens? So I went back, and then six of us、uh, who went to the spring seminar, we gathered and decided to go back to Balamet. We met every week、uh, after the class, and then we, you know, picked up the material、uh, to study together, and then practice discussions. And yeah, we were preparing to go back to Balamet. And then about thirty Balamet students、uh, came to ICC as part of the Balamet、right. semester at the、uh, ICC, and the, that one of the The counselors that、uh, I became kind of close. She also came to Japan, so our relationship continued in Japan. And that's you know, and she was keep telling me, you know, you gotta study hard. You should come back. That's what what I did. At that time, it was like a double degree program. If I recall correctly, it was like two years at ICC, two years at Willamette, one year at ICC, two plus two plus one program. Is that correct? Yes, I think that was a unique. Program in Japanese university at that time. If you get scholarship, one is a full tuition payment, other one is a half tuition payment. But you get to be supported by the ICC until you get a degree.、Oh, uh, usually、yeah. two years. They will cover your tuition cost until you graduate, which was、uh, really、wow. good. So it was, of course, was very competitive. But I wasn't really worrying about it. I just needed to do that. So six、uh, of you came, right? So was there like a lot of people who applied for that program? I don't. I think many people applied. Maybe twenty, thirty. 
to get, uh, I got, actually got a, a scholarship from,、uh, actually from Olam,、uh, not from ICC. Terrific. So, from not speaking, barely speaking English when you enter ICC, going for two months, that changes your life, motivates you. You come back, you study really, really hard, and then you qualify to go back for this double degree program, which at that time was very progressive. Okay, now right, tell right. me about when you get to Alamit. Of course, it's very different now. You're a degree seeking student compared to like a two month, almost like fun experience, maybe study program. Tell me about the、yes. differences between the two month program and the A real degree seeking program.、Uh, the first semester at Willamette, coming back as a transfer student, it was a hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, there are only three places I, I moved around my, my room, classroom, and library. Those three points、oh. every day. No social life, no fun time, also, not so much sleeping time either.、Uh, it was just so. Overwhelmingly different and difficult. I didn't know at that time you know, I was going to survive. It was a big shock. Tell me about the difference of the academics in the two month program and the academics in the real program. The two month program was designed for international students, English classes, and some of the basic、uh, American politics and economics and、uh, sociology. So the professor. At Willamette, they are very good at teaching and they prepared well enough and make it easy enough for a second language learner to understand. But now it is American university in Amer- you know, American classroom situation in American university with、uh, the native speakers and you know, the local people. It's totally different. Speed is different. Homework assignment was different, and there are a lot of discussions you have to participate in. And otherwise, you know, you don't get a good grade. So it was really difficult to adjust to this new and tough environment. Entire first semester was just a hell. It was crazy. Just studying, studying, studying. Yes. Imagine that you take about maybe 20, 30 minutes to read one page of the textbook because you have to look up the dictionary on the new words. And if you have a 20 pages in each class and you're taking a three or four classes, it's mathematically impossible. <laughs> To do all the reading, right? It is crazy. I thought I was gonna, I have to give up or I have to return home with the shame of not making it. How did you get through? Did your, it was your first semester, did you get through? Did you pass your classes? There's one little story. The first quiz I had at,、uh, at the American politics class. I didn't sleep. I studied as much as I can. I borrowed the notes, memorized, and then prepared for the test. So the quiz came and I did my best, and maybe I was able to answer maybe half. So I thought, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. This is、uh, not good. And when the professor returning、uh, the grade, well, I, I got C minus. Were you happy? No, no, C minus. No, I have to keep maintain B average to keep、oh. the scholarship. So I was very disappointed. And this professor,、uh, Dr. Carrie Shea, she said, Masaki, look around. There are Lower grade in this test than you, so keep it up. And that almost made me tear up. I, I saw the light, right? Because I, I came,、uh, I'm not a native speaker, and I didn't have a good grade, but there are native speakers whose grade was lower than me. That、wow. gives me some you know, light. Yeah, so yeah. I still appreciate Dr. Shea when she said that. And that was the, my turning point. Meaning that what then you studied harder or you were more motivated? Just do it, don't give up, just keep doing it. And if it doesn't work out, maybe it wasn't meant to be, but you just do it, just like a Nike commercial. It's just do it, do the best you can, and then accept the consequences. So, did you just do that for the next two years? You did it, you just kept studying like you were studying, no social life. I was life. studying and studying and studying, and you remember me. And the first thing you told me was, Masaki, you're wasting your life, you are always studying and not doing anything else. <laughs> yeah, gradually, and but the steadily, I think I started to learn. How to study、uh, more efficiently.、Um, and I was trying to be a perfect, but you cannot be perfect. If you get 80%, that's a B, right? right? So I started to learn how to survive. I think that was necessary. I never studied that hard in my whole life. And then I think that actually built my backbone. See, my see. you know, confidence. You know, sometimes a crisis will reveal your true potential, 
or your character. So that first semester at Willamette, uh, I think that was a time that definitely saw my weakness and um, but also the people around me helped me to gain my confidence in that uh, very stressful uh, environment. And then so I passed all the courses at the end of the semester. And the audience doesn't know, but you and I actually studied together at Willamette. That's how we know each other for many <laughs> yes. now, decades, right? I wasn't a good influence on you at that time, but I was trying, you were just always living in the library, right? And I tried to get you to be more relaxed and not as serious. <laughs> Was that something good for you? No, man. No. <laughs> you had corrupted me, man. Because I didn't have any choice. The other choice was give up and then, you know, return to Japan was a shame. And all my, you know, dreams, aspiration will be gone. So I was a desperate. I was yeah. desperate. After first semester, I, I started to learn how to study better and then I started to have a little more social time, more free time, and I learned to enjoy the life as a college student. And then I think you are the one of the, the guys who showed me how to enjoy American <laughs> college life. Okay, I got a little and bit of all, credit. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you taught me how to enjoy life. There was other things rather than just the studying. Okay, then I feel honored that you think that. Thank you. <laughs> and then you also joined the fraternity. Why did you join the Beta Theta Pi fraternity? Uh, I think the the folks at the Beta House, they are very friendly to international students. He invited us for the parties and that system I never knew when I was in Japan. Um, you know, the, all the, the students coming from different parts of the United States living together as a brothers and then share their time together and they build a, a brotherhood uh, relationship. I thought that was something that I cannot experience in Japan. So I wanted to be part of it. Of course, you know, first semester was impossible. And second semester, I started to enjoy some of the function as a social member. Uh, I was invited as a social member. I think end of my junior year, uh, I think in January, I was asked if I want to become a member and I was honored and yeah, I went through what used to called hell week, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I don't think that. people can do that anymore, but yeah, that was another amazing experience that, you know, it's a crazy experience that I don't think it's normal. Uh, academic students might not experience. Right. <laughs> but in ret retrospect, that was a great experience too. Yeah, that, I remember that time. It was a special exception that the Beta Theta Pi, I was also a member, that we accepted you and Mitsuru, the two uh, ICC <laughs> Japanese students. And we wanted to make the, f the fraternity more international in a sense. Yeah, I think we were one of the first to accept international students um, of course you know with all the work that you folks are studying you know the academics it was hard that's why at the beginning we thought okay social member would be enough but it wasn't the full right. flavor right and i think you know the difference right. between you know just going maybe oh, yeah. not even halfway so i think that was a really good experience so tell me you get through the two years okay any hmm. social life any girlfriends well you know obviously the the girl i went out uh when i was um two months program uh we broke up you know, I didn't have any time, no time. And uh, uh, we went separate ways. And I didn't really want to have a girlfriend because I want to focus on study. But I met this girl when I was a senior, came back from UA in Hawaii, uh, spending a semester at UH, like you suggested. And Sorry I met this girl. <laughs> she was actually on her way to go to PLU, uh, Pacific Lutheran University in, uh, in Washington. But uh, her best friend was uh, studying at Willamette. Brenda, do you oh, remember Brenda? Owings. Brenda yeah, Owings? I remember Brenda. Yeah. So she was just visiting and she came to the morning of political science class. I think it was American foreign policy. And I, I never saw her. You know, Willamette is a small school, so I knew most of the students, right? But there was a new student sitting in the front and I looked at her profile. She was kind of cute. So it turned out that she actually had decided to go to Willamette instead of PLU and then she started to study at Willamette and then uh, we become a good study friend. And she also joined a martial arts club, Shorin Kempo. We practice on campus. She was first really good uh, study buddy, you know, good friend. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the social time in my senior year. I was more relaxed. I had a more lead time. When after I graduated, went back to Japan and she came to one of the Japanese uh, leading universities in Tokyo area, uh, International Christian University, ICU. She transferred there to study. So our relationship continued in Japan and eventually uh, we ended up getting married. And That's the kind Sue. of short story of, yeah, yeah. it's Sue, yeah. That's really interesting. Interesting. She changed 
the university at the beginning, instead of going to PLU, she went to Willamette because you were there. Not just me, but I thought, yeah, she got the same kind of scholarship from Willamette. Now, before right. we move there, I wanted to ask you, so you finish up your two years at Willamette, you survive. It must have been a great feeling that you got through. Yeah, uh, I was very, very tired when I finished. And I, you know, I had a, a chance to maybe, um, well, actually my academic advisor asked me if I wants to go to grad school. But I was so tired of studying English, I wanted to go back to Japan and start making some money. So I, I decided to go back and then finish TIU, ICC. After studying in an American environment with the rigor, you know, the, the language difference, you go back to ICC for your fifth year. It must mm. be a huge difference. Academic rigor and seriousness, and you probably know this, but uh, uh, in Japanese university, especially back in old days, you finish uh, most of the studies by junior year, and usually senior year is the time uh, for uh, finding a job, recruiting, uh, you know, checking the companies, and uh, preparing for the the job hunting, and uh, maybe senior thesis just a few classes so the same situation was my situation after i returned i had a very few classes to do with and the thesis and then i was uh, preparing to find a job so not much studying thesis and maybe club activities i was at ess so i did some club activities but uh, thinking about what i wanted to do uh, after graduation you must have been a big shot on campus then because you're one of the few japanese students who actually went to america you know, uh, six of us went together uh, from the spring seminar and all six of us graduated. I think it was a you know, big deal because up to that point, only one or two went to Willamette. Yeah, we had a big group. So we are featured in the newspapers and stuff after we returned. I think the uh, university was looking at us, you know, how we choose our future jobs. At that time, these types of programs are very unusual, right? When you go through your job recruitment, which is usually interviews, of course, and did you go to mm -hmm. many? I narrowed down to four or five that I wanted to work for. And uh, you, yeah, you I did some research and then you know read some books or uh, contacted uh, uh, senpai, or the the senior who studied in the United States and came back and uh, got a job at that particular company. I think it was uh, Sony Japan, correct? Sony and also Citibank. Oh. Citibank also offered me a job. It was kind of interesting because I didn't go for the interview. I went in to ask some questions. I uh, just uh, inquiries about the, uh, the bank. And after my I finished my questions and the person said, I actually have some question for you, Mr. Shimada. <laughs> and then ended up but he offered me a job wow in those days that must have been so unusual that doesn't happen well, I, I, I was just flabbergasted i mean i was, I was surprised you know i i didn't go for the the normal route of uh, lining up for the company for the right. initial interview and the test i just went to ask for some questions it was a very interesting experience so that gives me confidence too i only have some place that uh, some company wants to give me a job. So I, I think I was more relaxed when I uh, applied for other companies. So Masaki, think about this then. Going to the United States and getting your, your double degree in Japan and the United mm. States mm. had to be a really big plus for you because, you know, nothing against ICC, but ICC was not a big school then. It was a quite, quite small school. All those seniors they would have loved to work at a big company like sony or citibank but the chances are they probably wouldn't get there but you did do you think it's because of the degree you had and the experience that the companies recognized i think more or less yes especially citibank it's a foreign bank right. so they're uh, obviously looking for somebody who has experience in foreign countries or or maybe american education so citibank yeah, probably. Uh, Sony, Sony was different. <laughs> they they never really asked my um, like transcript. It was very different. Uh, I went on October first, which was the opening day of the uh, company visit. At that time, I lined up. You know, get on the early train, go to Sony headquarters, and they line up. And we had a group interview. Uh, and then there was a. I think there was a total of three or four interviews and then there was an exam too but they never asked uh, to submit my transcript which was very strange 
And I always went as the ICC student. I never mentioned from my side that I have a degree from American University. But you know, one of the interview was English. And I remember there are maybe 20 people in the room. And one of the one of the guys were talking about um, his uh, study abroad experience, uh, nice. spending uh, maybe a few months, and he looked very confident in his, in his uh, conversation. After he came back from the interview, he was sweating wow. so bad. <laughs> yeah, looked pale. It's gonna oh no. <laughs> interview was the uh, former Apollo Eleven uh, simultaneous interpreter. Um, Sen Nishiyama, who was a very famous person. You know, Sony, there are so many people who, who are bilingual there. Be able to speak English wasn't, you know, not, not something big deal. So I don't know why they chose me. Well, My English wasn't that good. It had to be basically based on your English, though, if they didn't have your transcripts, so they didn't really acknowledge that you had graduated from an American university. Mm. That sounds really strange. I thought that the Willamette degree helped you, but it didn't seem to help you so much. Willamette is a very small school. If it's a Harvard, Stanford, maybe, but you know, it's it's a small liberal arts school, which is, you know, it's a really good school, but small. So I think they are probably interested in my stories and maybe saw some uh, potential in the future. If they saw my transcript, maybe you know, I wasn't hired. <laughs> Like sure, I said, right. I barely made it to the B abilities. I don't think people realize how difficult a degree seeking program is. It's not like exchange. It's not like a language program. I think there are so few, maybe 1% or maybe 1% of the 1% in Japan that actually do a degree seeking program. And only those people have the rite of passage that they know how tough mm. it is to really do what the typical American or Western European student is doing. So. Yeah, kudos to you. So tell me about working. You worked three years at Sony? Yeah, a little over three years. And how was you that? Know, it was great. Great company. I still have a very close contact with my, um, what we call classmates, class of 81 entering Sony. There are 35 of us. You know, they came from many different places, different universities. Some are from different countries. It was a wonderful bunch of guys and the ladies that uh, we worked together. It was a great experience. It, it was a great company, a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, wonderful opportunities. Uh, I even get to meet uh, then Chairman Morita-san. Uh, wow. I still remember his uh, voice. And, wow, he's a legend. Uh, yeah, he's a legend. Uh, very charismatic. Yeah, amazing person. So what made you decide to quit then if you, have such, you had such a good job, you had such good <laughs> colleagues? I was never really a business person. I think maybe that's one of the reasons. And uh, I wanted to start the family. By that time, I was already married. And uh, I was thinking about family and living in a Tokyo. I don't think it was the best environment to raise our kids. We wanted to raise our kids in Hawaii, like you. I didn't see my future there. You know, when you look at the, your company and if you look at your managers, you know, five years, 10 years from now, that's who you would be like. Yes, it's a good company and it, it's kind of prestigious too, but they're always so busy, maybe moving to overseas, coming back, going to overseas. Sometimes, you know, uh, difficulty of the uh, child's education because of that. You know, all those factors uh, told me maybe this is not the place for me to stay too long. So like I said, you know, I'm not really, I guess, business minded person. I wanted to be a bridge uh, because of my experience and my um, background and i thought maybe i have a uh, good opportunities in the united states to do that so you <laughs> and sue decide to of course return back and why did you decide on portland oregon to live why did you move back there first we went back to uh Klamath falls where she you know, my wife sue is from k falls uh, and then after we, yeah k falls and then we uh, needed to find a job so of course the portland is a biggest city uh, economic center of uh, Oregon. So I thought it would be a good place to uh, find a job. And what job did you find in initially? Initially, I was, uh, I found a job uh, working for the uh, travel agency based uh, uh, Japanese American company. Uh, they are doing a lot of uh, uh, exchanges and uh, also one of the projects that they were doing at that time was the uh, helping a Japanese te television crew uh, to make a, a drama in Oregon com uh, called From Oregon With Love, Oregon Kara Ai. Yeah, the Furia Ikko-san and the Kinomi Nana-san. I think they had a first uh, 
uh, series, and then it was a popular in Japan. So they came back and made a, a special for several years after that. And I was、uh, interested in that、uh, project as well. So you were the support and the coordinator of of, of that whole the production crew and things. Yeah, it was interesting. I was a non-production、uh, helper or coordinator, meaning that you know, moving the、uh, uh, cast and crew or、uh, making sure they're getting fed. Things like that, and then it was a great experience working with the Japanese television crew and then、uh, actors. How many years did you work at the travel agent? I worked there for maybe four years. Other than that, I was doing just uh,、um, helping uh, Japanese school exchange program coming to Oregon, you know, junior high school, high school, sometimes college, you know, summer programs, homestay programs. I did an interpreter、uh, a few times or an assigned interpreter、uh, for the clients. I was the operational manager、uh, for this company. Wow! So you were kind of doing what you wanted to do, right? Kind of being the bridge, being the in between. Yes. It, that all kind of fit what you wanted, correct? Yes. Okay. And then I was able to, you know, visit Japan、uh, once in a while,、uh, so that was great. So after four years, what made you leave the travel agency and move to what's your next job? What was your next job? <laughs> Again, it was lucky because、uh, through my job, I get to know some of the uh, uh, folks from Japan, including people working at the consulate or. The companies and and one day in the elevator,、um, I think it was maybe I had some、uh, business、uh, in that building, but、uh, I was、uh, with the one of the Japanese uh, uh, diplomat、uh, consul, and then he asked me if I'm interested in working for the Japanese、uh, consulate, and I was kind of surprised. Also at that time,、uh, after four years working for that agency, it was really busy, and I was a little bit exhausted. I thought I maybe. Can try, you know, working for the government. You know, something I never experienced and something new. I had an interview and then I was offered a job. How many years did you do that?、Uh, I think about four years again、um, at the Portland Consul General of Japan office. I was assistant to the consul,、uh, doing most of the、uh, consular affairs uh, uh, business, the、uh, you know, passport, visa,、um, registration. Uh, certificate, and sometimes we need to go out and then support the Japanese national who are in trouble, helping trials. Sometimes, unfortunate、uh, death, and then we have to help family、uh, of the deceased、uh, coming from Japan and so forth. It was interesting experience. Get to know many interesting people.、Uh, that also sounds like something that is really what you really wanted to do, right? You know, before like, be the bridge, be help, support people. I think so. And what made you leave there? And what was your next job after that? So、uh, when I was、uh, working at the consulate, one of my、uh, favorite professors from Olam came to ask for、uh, visas for you know, his students to go to. Japan, and he said, "ICC、um, now, no TIU, they are、uh, building a small campus next to Walamet, and then gonna start the program. Are you interested?" So I said, "Oh, wow, that's interesting, but、uh, I'll kind of see how this progress or falls up." I said, "Thank you," and then、uh, I was asked again by、uh, executive director of the program, and if I'm interested in joining the program. Government job was very interesting and made a lot of interesting connections, but it's kind of not very exciting、uh, <laughs> job. It got a little boring.、Uh, except、uh, when, when, yeah. yeah, except、uh, you know when you're helping、uh, actually the people、uh, from Japan. You know, going back to my alma mater,、uh, Walamet, that changed my life. It's kind of Interesting, exciting.、Mm. You know,、uh, and maybe I can pay back some of the amazing opportunities that the university and the people there, you know, gave to me. So, yeah, decided to work for、uh, Tokyo International University of America (TIUA) on Walamet campus. And they built it right next door to Walamet. Right. I think the land was owned by Walamet, and the、uh-huh. TIU built residence hall and classrooms on that、uh, land. Uh, so it was、idea. like a joint tenancy. 
And the whole idea was to have exchange and most of the students who came probably wouldn't be able to take regular classes, but they would have their own program. And at the summer that were really good, could do some classes on Willamette's campus and Mm -hmm. have a roommate exchange etc is that right yeah it's a you know like a three-step program uh yeah. it's a one-year program they come in the spring mainly focus on building their academic english skills uh, or presentation skills and then they start taking a subject matter courses during the summertime when the alarm is closed so professors are available so they can teach with the uh, english faculty supporting the classes and in the fall uh it's the beginning of the new school year alarm it and then uh, students are able to take uh, regular Willamette courses depending on their English ability. And all the credits uh, are transferable back to TIU. So even though they spend a year in American University, they can still graduate TIU in four years. And like you said, some of them uh, have opportunity to apply for the transfer uh, scholarship to come back to Willamette for degree. And what was your position there? You were like Dean of Students, I recall? No, uh, I started as a, a academic person, uh, Assistant Director of Academic Affairs. And then uh, I did uh, uh, Student Affairs, and then I did both Academic and Student Affairs. And then I ended up uh, focusing more on the student life, and I become uh, one of the leadership team to manage the program. How many years did you work there, Masaki? Believe it or not, 28 years. Yeah. That's super long, well, man. Wow. It is, yeah. That's why I'm so old now. <laughs> and you were driving you know, uh, like one hour each way, right, from Portland. Right, right. I still lived in Portland, and I thought first maybe I would change my job in four or five years, like I used to do. That was my pattern before. Right. But uh, because I think what I did was uh, really interesting and then fulfilling, you know, dealing with you know, working with the students, ended up staying too long. So I was 28 years commuting from Salem every day. You know, it sounds like that arena, just like the rest, just like the travel agency, just like Sony, you were actually being the in-between. You're helping students, which you enjoy. I can tell that your whole personality is about, is about helping people, supporting people. That's what you enjoy. That That's, you know, service, I think, is really your, your mantra. Mm. And that fit you, again, perfectly, I would guess. That's why I stayed that long. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's really tiring and you know, especially commuting um, every day. But, uh, you know, when you see the new students, you, when you see the, some of their eyes, kind of reminds me of, you know, or, or, or me, you, you know, right, like right. when we're when young, right? Came, right? They still have a certain hopes and you know, come into the different environment, different culture, you know, confused, sometimes, you know, like disappointed, lost confidence, but, you know, there's always opportunity. And I think that program also changed lives of many students. And so what made you end there? I, re- I recall it was something to do with COVID. What happened? COVID came on the 2020, right? When the, you know, the students come in February. So the 2020 students were already arrived. They already here on campus. And then uh, there was an announcement of a lockdown and maybe the Japanese airport might also shut down for a while. So uh, I was so unfortunate that we have to send all the students back to Japan oh, after wow. spending almost two months. Wow. Uh, so th- we let them go for the uh, last uh, chance to uh, see the United States on the spring break. But right after spring break, we heard that the, at the beginning of April, the airport might shut down. So we scrambled to get the bus, to uh, bus them to Seattle to leave for Japan before the Japanese airport kind of locked down. So uh, we are able to do that and all the students went back and also also the president of TIUA, a Japanese professor, went back with them. And uh, uh, we were doing some remote work, but um, without seeing the the future, you know, didn't know how long this pandemic continues. I don't think that TIU had uh, any choice but uh, close uh, temporarily and then has to um, lay off the faculty and staff at that point. So we are laid off at the end of April of 2020. See, and then did you officially retire? Well, I didn't retire first, and I was hoping that maybe the program will come back sooner, but it doesn't look like uh, that would be the case. And then I started to look for job in Portland area just to, you know, get through. But that was another opportunity for me to really think about my life and 
uh, because of the lockdown, I was home. I was doing some remote uh, meetings. I started to work on my garden, my yard that I neglected for 29 years. You know, it was crazy, really bad. And by working in a yard and then touching the soil, touching the tree, fixing a rock wall, trimming the trees, really gave me some comfort. You know, I really like to make place I live a little bit nicer. Uh, I was happy that I'm a, I am was very I'm a very close to Portland Japanese Garden. Uh, it's on the Washington Park, uh, which is about 10, 15 minutes away from my home. And I really wanted to look at the garden. You know, I thought that garden will probably give me some uh, comfort, serenity, peace. And through that, when I visited the garden and I felt I was really close to my home, I felt tranquility, harmony. I realized I really loved the Japanese garden culture that I was not really paying attention for a long time. And then, what? so what happened after that? I was told that there is a volunteer opportunity at the garden. They have a lot of volunteers helping a guest, uh, either uh, touring or being a docent for the exhibit or taking care of the garden itself as a horticultural uh, support staff. I applied and I accepted as a volunteer. So I started volunteering in June as the, um, what they call the garden monitor, uh, walking around, helping uh, visitors and explaining some things about Japan. And, and I started to really enjoy that. And also I wanted to really help the garden, uh, maintaining a garden, make it nicer, cleaner, uh, and then also learn how to create such a quiet beauty. So how long did you do the volunteer part for? I still do volunteer. I did uh, from the, the June 2020. And then following a the year, I was offered actually a part-time job, a paying job uh, to take care of the bonsai trees okay. displayed at the Japanese garden. And so you took that job. So you didn't have to go back to work. So you're kind of semi-retired now? Right, yeah. After I offered a job as a part-time, I said, well, I'm officially retired. I just gonna do volunteer and this part-time job that took care of the bonsai. So I guess they officially I'm retired uh, 2021. Tell me about bonsai. I, I, you know, we met last uh, fall, I think it was, or last year when you came for a bonsai yeah. exhibition. What made you all of a sudden become so interested in bonsai? Was it that return to nature to touch the soil? And tell me about that. I was really surprised the quality of bonsai display at the Portland Japanese Garden. Even more surprised, those trees are cared by non-Japanese bonsai artist. I was just amazed the quality and, and I was just blown away. I was lucky to be able to meet the one of the uh, bonsai artists who has a lot of trees there. And when I visited his uh, garden, I just felt I really wanted to do this. That's why I started to get into bonsai. We are very lucky in Portland that uh, we have one of the largest uh, uh, bonsai club in the United States called the uh, BSOP, Bonsai Society of Portland. We have over 500 membership. Most of them are local people, you know, and they are so enthusiastic about the bonsai. And we happen to have maybe five or six prominent bonsai artists in the United States. And also this environment, the climate, it's really um, good for growing a bonsai. You know, even in Japan, mm -hmm. I'm living in Japan, I rarely see bonsai around. Maybe I'm not looking, but then you came and we went to a temple in Kyoto and, yeah. and we went to the exhibition. Yeah. Kind of opened my eyes a little bit. So I'm kind of more looking around for bonsai, but it's still very uncommon. So is it a dying art in Japan, the art of bonsai? I think they have a problem of finding a successor. Uh, many bonsai uh, nurseries uh, artists in Japan. I don't see it's dying art now. The reason is because in the recent years, uh, many Asian people, particularly from China or Vietnam, some of them are very wealthy and then they also uh, love art of bonsai. You know, it's originally, you know, originally started in China. Many people come to Japan and buy expensive bonsais. Some of the bonsais are sold a on the auction. Bonsai. It's over a million dollars. So it's not rare to find a bonsai price range around, you know, 100,000, 200,000. So the bonsai um, nurseries you know, who owns a lot of uh, expensive bonsai, I think they are flourishing right now. But at the same time, there is a, a sort of a concern that all the good bonsais are disappearing from Japan. 
I mean, they've been bought. It's going, yeah, going overseas. You know, the, a lot of bonsai artists, they love trees, right? They want to care. So even though they sell the tree to their clients, usually in Japan, so they can still care those trees because some of the, you know, the people who buy bonsais are not professional bonsai artists. They want to display, they want to see this, you know, uh, beauty and living arts because they can take care of the bonsai trees after they sold it but when it's overseas it's very difficult uh, to do that and then um, i don't think many bonsai trees are coming back uh, sometimes people are just using just like uh, any other art piece want to have it and then maybe you know they'll survive or they might not survive so uh, the industry itself is not doing bad but again i think as the japanese art Form. I think it's yeah. They need to find young people to start get interested in bonsai. So overseas, bonsais are getting popular, but in Japan, I think still uh, have some issues getting attention. Tell me about bonsai. Okay, so like a lot of the people, the audience that might be watching this video may think like, mm. well, what is bonsai? It looks like just a small mini miniature tree. Maybe you can give us mm -hmm. a short summary of usually how long it takes and what the whole process is and give me some examples of some years. How, how old are some of these more expensive bonsai? Some of the bonsais are from the, you know, like shogun era, you know, <laughs> by Tokugawa shogunate era. Um, that's how so many years? Three, 300 and some trees are 500 years old. Those trees are usually uh, what we call the legacy trees passed down to generation to generation. Art of bonsai is sometimes you can create sort of ancient look trees and styles by applying certain techniques. I know US in America, the bonsais are still uh, new. Um, art form but the trees in the united states is very old uh, for example like a rocky mountain juniper trees that i see here some are four or five hundred years old and being a bonsai is the after the trees are you know taken out from the nature and put into the pot for people to have a much close contact with the nature or the styles so as a bonsai i think in the united states maybe 20 30 years bonsai in the united states is relatively young they look ancient because of the the technique and styles but the bonsai in japan a uh, few hundred years old uh, some of those are very expensive so who is teaching these who taught these americans to continue bonsai was it japanese immigrants or japanese americans that continued the tradition i think the bonsai became popular after the japan lost the war and then the, many servicemen came to japan and then some of them were you know just amazed with the this tiny nature the beautiful art form living art form in japan and then you know there are japanese americans uh, living in the united states uh, some of them uh, brought that uh, art form uh, from japan when they moved to the United States. So I think the first teachers were the Japanese American folks here. And then Japan started to accept a foreign apprentice. And uh, one of my teachers uh, here, uh, he was apprenticed early 2000 and then uh, came back and then start uh, his own uh, nursery and teaching. Now there are quite a few uh, foreigners studying uh, under the masters in Japan as a uh, apprentice. And so they learned uh, the right way and might take, you know, three to five, seven years, but some of those um, who are really uh, committed to the uh, bonsai, they went through and then and they came back uh, to the United States or other countries, and then they are trying to uh, teach this beautiful traditional the art form. So it sounds like bonsai is maybe more popular outside of Japan than in Japan at the present moment. I have a feeling maybe that is accurate. Um, I think it's still very limited people are interested in uh, bonsai, but I think you know, overseas, I think it's more popularity uh, are gaining, especially in, in Portland. You know, like I said, we have a largest bonsai community. Over 500 people are members. The 500 are mainly Americans? Oh, yeah. They're all, all Americans. I don't see any Japanese national in our club at this point. Maybe Japanese Americans, but not Japanese Japanese like me. Okay. And what about the teachers? So how many teachers do you have in Portland? And they have to be American, I'm assuming, correct? Uh, like I said, there are five or six very prominent uh, teachers. And then in the Bonsai Club, it uh, has a long history. So they are what we call the mentors. Uh, they have a, a experience, long experience, maybe 20, 30 years experience of uh, uh, 
carrying a bonsai. So when we have a gathering, those mentors voluntarily come and help teach new folks about the basics. And they are really friendly and also wants to spread this wonderful art form. I see. And how long have you been doing bonsai now? So um, I started uh, 2021, three or four years, right? And are you enjoying it? Do you feel this sense of like in the moment, kind of the Ichigo, Ichie kind of thinking? Yeah, I love, I love working with the trees, uh, developing the trees, starting the trees, and even at the looking at our trees, you know, some trees have so much history that kind of speaks to you, you know, like show that uh, the environment this tree grew up, the nature, the severity of the natural element. That's why this branch is bent this way or broken this way. A living art form, never, never same. Very slowly, but it's always changing. And you also told me that you are learning tea ceremony, ocha, is that correct? <laughs> yes. And what made um, you decide to do the ocha also? Was it connected to the bonsai? I think so. Uh, I think many Japanese art forms are connected with the, the way of tea. Uh, you know, even Japanese architecture, um, some of the uh, art craft connected with the tea. A lot of uh, um, the traditional Japanese art form. At the Japanese garden, a lot of a cultural demonstration. And one of them is the tea ceremony. And I was always kind of interested in that uh, traditional form. Um, in fact, when I was in high school, I belonged to the tea club. Oh, really? Japanese. I didn't know that. Really? <laughs> but my intention was not pure. You wanted to meet girls. There's, well, there was a girl uh, that I really liked uh -huh. and she was, yeah, tea <laughs> club. So my purpose was to go and drink a tea and look at her. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but uh, so this time, um, you know, one of the t uh, teachers, uh, tea teachers, uh, she's also American, uh, was trained in Kyoto for a long time. She's a wonderful lady. She's she's like a to me like a Lady Yoda. I don't know. She has this yeah aura, and whenever she makes tea or she talks about tea, it just she grows. You know, like aura, like you said, aura, and she knows so much about the culture, the deep part of the Japanese culture, but she make it very interesting and fun too. Um, you know, I thought the tea, aligning a tea might, must be really rigid. Maybe that's the way in Japan, but right. she make it fun. She make it more like it's having tea with me this afternoon, wow. having just a tea and chat with me this morning, but it's part of the lesson. I really enjoy having tea with her in a conversation, looking at the scroll, you know, try to interpret how she feels, how I feel, look at the chabana, the, uh, the flower, and then how you feel about the season. It's just a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time. And each time, you know, of course, the tea bowl is different. Flowers arrangement is different. So like you said, every moment when I have a tea with her is once in a lifetime. And it's just, just great. Wow. And because I'm a beginner, there are a lot of uh, steps, no shosa, you know, the, the way to do things. So I really have to focus and concentrate and I can block everything else when I was practicing. It's just cool. a wonderful time. Wow. So she's American also, correct? Yes. So the irony of your life right now is that you are Japanese, you immigrated or moved to the United States, and now you are learning the very typical traditional old arts like bonsai and ocha, probably two of the more older, more traditional type <laughs> arts from Americans. You who are Japanese are learning from the American teachers. Is that correct? That is correct. But you know, I don't think it's unique because the, my teacher is American. Whoever master the art, you know, whatever the nationality, if you put your time, energy, dedication, and then become a master, it doesn't matter who you learn from. Yeah, I understand. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just the from. communicative language is the English, yeah. but. No, it doesn't matter, but it's just to me so ironic that you would come all the way to the United States to learn a <laughs> Japanese art from an American instead of just learning, you know, like most people would just learn in Japan or would come to Japan to learn. But that is well, so interesting. I wasn't interested in those things when I was young. You know that, right? Yeah. I was looking at America West, you know, yeah, disco, yeah. movies, dancing, yeah. yeah, and surfing. Well, surfing is 
also my therapy too, but mostly looking at the Western culture. And I was admiring the, you know, the liveliness and excitement. And then、um, now I'm、uh, started to get settled. You know, I have more time to think, more time for myself, more time to ponder because I don't have to work. <laughs> um, and I think、um, I find myself. Longing for the things I used to be surrounded or had in Japan. And those things comfort me. Yeah, that is so interesting that it's like you're going cyclic, like, you know, like they talk about Zen or whatever, or the whole circle that you left Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did all those things and, so, and then you're returning home. But in America, with American teachers, I mean, that's so interesting and amazing. Remember, you, you know, we like movies, Star Wars, James Bond, <laughs> Shorenji Kempo. You know, you were a movie person, right? Surfing, of course. I, you know, now to see you go and do bonsai and ocha, for me, I'm, you know, I've known you for what, 30, 40 years. And are you happy now? Are you, do you feel centered and grounded in what you're doing now? Very happy. I am very fortunate. I'm grateful for what I am now. Come to think of it, I think I, I probably liked like a Kyoto or Japanese garden or tea because in high school, when I was in high school, I spent a month in Kyoto、oh. staying at my relative's house and I was biking all around Kyoto, not just looking for Maiko san, you know, <laughs> but I really liked temple, quietness, and then. Yeah, serenity. I really like the Japanese gardens. You know, when I grew up,、uh, my grandpa was very successful. So we had a, a beautiful Japanese garden in our backyard. We have two gardens、wow. there's a waterfall and hills and the koi pond. And so I grew up in that environment. So maybe something that, I, you know, unknowingly that I was experiencing or going through in my childhood is just coming back. They always say life is cyclic. So maybe you've done the complete、mm. turn and you're coming home almost. Now, I'm going to shift the subject a little bit. So, you know, you're happily married, of course. You have two sons, correct? Yes, I have yeah, two boys, two men. Two <laughs> They men, grew、right? up. Grew up and、yes. tell me about are you happy that you raised them in the United States? And if so, why? I think I'm happy that they grew up、uh, in the United States as an American.、Uh, I think they had a lot of choices when they're young. I think the Portland is the fortunate place that we didn't have a, a lot of、uh, racial tension at that time. And I think our kids grew up mingling with many different、uh, t y p e of people, especially my younger son went to the, one of the largest high schools with the、uh, most diversity in the student body. And I think it、uh, was great. And both、uh, enjoying、uh, what they like to enjoy when they're young, you know, sports, especially, or music. And then, then they chose their own path and happiness, and then they're doing great. And most of all, they are a nice people, and which made me very happy. Only regret I had was that I should have sent my boys、uh, to Japan more often when they were young so they could play and connect with the,、uh, my relatives in Japan when、yeah. they're young. You know, they were kind of busy even in the summertime on the sports and then,、uh, other.、Um, Interest, but lucky to have two wonderful boys. I think it's mainly because of my wife. I think she is the rock, she is the key. No, I wasn't around. You know, I was working. I was working in Salem every day. Now, tell me something when you when you communicate, do you communicate in English or Japanese? Because I know Sue's Japanese is very, very good. Mostly, you know, like a daily conversation, just a lot of a Japanese word. Are used, but when we talk about、uh, like a more discussion topic, probably English. And did you teach your boys Japanese or did they just end up speaking、uh, English? When、uh, Yoji was born,、uh, Sue and I decided to speak only Japanese at home because outside is all English, right? So、uh, his Japanese was really good when they were、uh, when he was young, but once uh, he um, grew up and they started to、uh, play with the other kids, of course, you know. Uh, the English b e c o m e his first language. Both Yoji and Kota went to、uh, what we call Japanese immersion school in、oh, Portland.、Uh-huh. We are lucky to have the immersion、yeah, school. It's a、yeah. public school, but、uh, half of the instruction、uh, subjects are taught in, in Japanese. And they went through the elementary school.、Uh, Kota went to, all the way to high school.、Uh, Yoji got out from、uh, middle school because he went to play basketball. In terms of the knowledge, I think Kota has more knowledge about the Japanese. But in terms of fluency, I think Yoji. 
because he,、uh, his pronunciation is pretty good. They have a base. If they have an opportunity to be able to speak, I think、uh, they'll be okay communicating with the, just the regular Japanese conversation. And what about Sue? When I see her in your home, you know, she seems to be like a perfect blend of American and Japanese. I can see a very Japanese, you know, although she's from Calamity Falls, Oregon,、yeah. she's able to very Japanese like, you know, the, the way she integrates or interacts with people.、Um, right, right. How did that happen? Did she learn that from you or is it just in her <laughs> DNA that she had this? Because the typical American person would have a hard time making that adjustment. Not everyone can do that. I think it's a little bit of a both. I think it's her character and also maybe life with me too. Do you think you had the American dream where you immigrated to America and you have all the success and happiness that you have ever thought? That you would you could have? I don't know. You know, it's, people define a success a different way. If the success to me is to be happy, I'm very successful and I'm very happy. I think you've, you, that's it. I think you've found what everyone,、uh, most people are looking for and never attained. So after coming to the United States, I realized that I didn't really know about Japan. I mean, I thought I knew, but、uh, maybe I could have stayed in Japan a little longer. Or maybe travel to many different parts of Japan and also Asia. No, I never been to any other Asian countries. What do you miss about Japan in these last 40 years? Like, what do you always say? Oh, I wish no, I could do this. Or, you know, is it like food? o f u d o o f u d o okay. On sand. On sand, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and also the friends. Okay, and tell me, what do you value the most about the United States that you're happy that you moved? You said that your children, your boys, had a lot more choices. Like maybe they wouldn't have those、yeah. same choices like in Japan. What else? You know, the focus on educational, I mean, the critical thinking, being assertive, and be able to have your own opinion. I think those are really good p a r t of American system. Yeah, freedom.、Uh, freedom to do things as long as it's not violating any laws. And many people have a good balance in life. You know, not just work, 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 but、uh, when they take a break, they take a break. And it's much easier to take a vacation here with less money. The entertainment business in America is the best in the world sports, entertainment. Only regret is that I think the, maybe you feel the same way, but、uh, I think the you know, disparities between have and have not i t s getting wider and wider. There are more people, I think. Uh, suffering. Even in Portland, I think, the, especially downtown, safety and the environment is maybe more intolerant, sometimes more violent. Used to be more relaxed. It's something is different. You know, it's kind of a negative vibe. I feel more, not just in the United States, but you know, maybe the world as a whole, you know, like a conflict in other parts of the world. Just the actual war is happening. And- yeah, I mean, even for me, living in Japan, I think one of the, the most important. Things for me to live in a society is safety, right? That you don't always、mm. have to worry about your things being taken or stolen or you being、mm. mugged or、mm. robbed, you know,、mm. somebody being mean or cruel or, or whatever to you. At least Japan overall is still very safe.、Uh, people are honest usually. You know, you can still get your、mm. things if you drop or lose them. You don't have to worry about, you know, being mugged or things getting stolen. I mean, not the best things about Japan. I think Japan is a good country to live when you are older. <laughs> US is a good country when you're younger. Another question is that if you had a chance to live this, your life over again, would you have done、mm. anything differently? I don't think so. I'm pretty happy now. And because of all those things, good and bad, will lead to this moment, right? I think I'm very fortunate. I've been having a great life. Are you more comfortable in the United States now more than living in Japan? Or are you still more comfortable in Japan? Japan. I was more comfortable living in the United States before. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you know, Japan has a, a safety and also the, the medical system, welfare, social medicine. It's a nice place to, to live. Do you feel more comfortable speaking English or Japanese now? Or are you basically balanced? <laughs> yeah, I feel comfortable in both languages. <laughs> so when you look back, Maasaki, on your life, your, your whole process of study abroad and how that one study abroad experience would change your life, and then you'd go back to study for a degree. 
degree and then you get a good job at Sony and then you immigrate or move to the United States and then you work for the travel agency and then the consulate and then TIUA mm -hmm. and now you're doing volunteer at the Japanese Garden in Portland as well as doing bonsai mm -hmm. and cha. When you really think about it, you've had a really complete life. It's pretty amazing that you've gone full circle. Is there anything that you would like to share with the audience? You know, like you always said, the traveling, go to different countries when you have a chance, you know, especially when you're young. Go out from your own country or culture and then see the different part of the earth, you know, and meet people. I think it's, it gives you a lot of a impact and maybe will help your life. And I, you know, it was my case that I came to the United States and then I realized uh, a lot of things about myself. I'm very, very fortunate. I think I'm blessed with the people surrounding me, my friends, family. They're always supporting me, helping me, sacrificing for me to be happy. I think a lot of people know they want to travel, but maybe they think about it when I retire or whatever. By the time you retire, it's a little bit different. If mm -hmm. you can do the traveling when you're young and get those experiences, it really changes your whole mindset. I mean, look at you. Right, right. Your whole life was changed, right? My life was changed. Mm -hmm. I came on right. that Willamette program to ICC and look where I am. I'm still in Japan and it's kind of funny. I'm Japanese American. I'm from Hawaii. I'm a fourth generation Yonsei. You're Japanese. You and end up in America. I, as an American, end up in Japan. And we both were influenced yeah. by a study abroad program that would right. change our life. So basically study abroad, yes. travel. So when you think of the magnitude of how powerful a uh, study abroad or even living abroad or maybe um, just traveling for a long period of time. I mean, short period is fine too, but the longer you can travel, the better I always believe because you have I more chance so. to get to meet the people. And that's why I like mm -hmm. to call this show the global locals. It's like people like you or even myself, we're more, I like to believe, more global. We can look bigger because we've traveled. At the same time, we've lived long enough in an adopted country that we become more like a local person there, kind of like a global local. You know, had you not done your travel and I had not done my travel, in this case, it was study abroad. But it doesn't have to be study abroad. It could be working abroad. It could be just traveling yeah. for a year, backpacking. It could be, yeah. you know, right. teaching English in Spain or visiting your friend right. in Argentina, or, you know, for a while. So, yes, I agree 100%. Traveling builds diversity. It, it opens your mind yeah. so you don't have those dislikes or likes or you don't like somebody because they look this way or they believe this way or whatever you know yeah i think it really opens the mind and it's the best teacher i <laughs> hope that more japanese and americans would be able to travel and for longer periods <laughs> Not just like, you know, Japanese go for like four days and come back. You got to assimilate in, right? Yeah. You know, the John Lennon song, Imagine, yeah. that's it. That's the ultimate. If the human can achieve that, that's the ultimate goal. So Masaki, I want to thank you for being my guest. I have learned so much about you. You know, I have known parts of it, but today I was able to hear the whole thing together. I just want to thank you for just being so kind to give me your time and just being part of this. Just so happy that you reached where you are you know not many people can thank get you. to your point masaki thank you again masaki i really appreciate it and that's all for today the man in japan yep. podcast take care